because people like he's unpredictable. People know cannot tell what's going to happen. If he's going to knock people out, he's going to submit them, and I'm pretty impressed with his progress on the ground. Tyler Lawrence here with World of MMA alongside UFC heavyweight Shane Del Rosario. Shane, uh, to start it off, how do those words feel before your name? Uh, it feels good, you know. I've been fighting now for five, almost six years, and that's been the goal, you know, to get to the top organization. It's always been the UFC, so to finally hear that, it uh, feels real good. You know, it shows that all my hard work has uh, really paid off, and you know my my presence in the sport is solidified, and I've, I'm in the top organization. You know, you're making your transition from the uh, Strike Force promotion to the UFC. Uh, how does it feel to to finally be on that big stage? Uh, it feels great. Yeah, I'm. Uh, the Strike Force is always taking care of me. Elite XC, I've been, I was in their, their challenger shows, so I've been on some good production value, but definitely never, and nothing at this level. I mean, the last, my last fight, part of the Grand Prix was my biggest one yet, and that was really cool being there with some of the top guys like Barnett, Alistair Overeem, some of those guys, and fighting in New York City. But um, going to UFC is definitely going to be a step up. I'm excited about it. You know, I'm just ready to get back to training hard and uh, looking forward to my fight. Hopefully in April. It was just recently announced um, at the end of December. Uh, that you did make the transfer over to the UFC. Where were you when you got the phone call? Um, I think I was at home or uh, just hanging out, not really doing anything. My coach called me. He's like, oh, I was getting to the gym. He didn't tell me right then, so I came to the gym, and he said, um, you know, they, they took over your contract. And, and we kind of thought that because when us, when UFC bought Strike Force, we knew something was going to happen where they were going to start merging. We just didn't know what exactly. Um, and then I heard some other guys going over, and so I figured, you know, that I, I know I was, I've been injured for almost a year now, um, but I, I'm 11-0, and, and I'm a good prospect, so I, I wouldn't think they'd overlook me. So I just knew it was a matter of time or, as a ma or when I got my first fight back. But I happened to be already, and I'm excited about it. I'm um, uh, just really happy and um, honored to be part of it. And if you could tell us a little bit more about that accident that sidelined you for about a year, um, what exactly happened? Uh, it was back in April, uh, April 14th of uh, 2011. Um, I was driving home. Uh, I was just checking out the waves, and I was getting home. I was at my stoplight going home. Uh, my friend was driving my car, um, and a, a drunk driver came from the opposite way, fell asleep, and then uh, came over the median and T-boned us. Um, hit us about like 40, 50 miles per hour. So it was a pretty ma major accident. Um, I went to the hospital the next day, um, and I uh, had several herniated discs. Um, it's, it's been real rough. You know, I've had some injuries, like broken hands, um, slight tears in my knees. But nothing like this, you know, I was at maybe out for like six weeks max of those injuries. This one's going to be almost six, eight months, you know, and uh, it's compensated everything in my life from training down to just hanging out or driving, hanging out with my nephews and nieces. Everything's been compensated, you know, I've, I've been in a lot of pain. And uh, as an athlete, I've always been able to do whatever I want and just go full force. With this injury, I haven't been able to do anything. And it's been it's been pretty uh, crazy to think that, you know, I can't get in the gym and just go train it. I, I got to go to physical therapy. I got to just do little things to get myself better but it's coming along um, every week I feel a little bit better and better and I'm hoping it'll be 100% by April when you did get back in the gym how did it feel uh, on your body um, your first day back uh, it's rough I mean you guess any fighter they take time off from from a fight you know even a win but no injuries you take a couple weeks off and have fun you know celebrate you come back you're hurting you know this is definitely I've been really out of sh I was really out of shape when we first got back I mean after the accident, I was doing a lot of physical therapy, but it was just like core exercises, a lot of stability stuff, no cardio. And I haven't been able to run before. Or always, I always ran before, I haven't been able to run now. And it's been rough, you know. I definitely was really out of shape hurting for the first few weeks, you know. But I'm getting there, my cardio's coming back. I was just uh, taking on swimming and uh, doing a lot of things, you know, get my cardio up and just get me stronger. And uh, the doctors obviously cleared you to get back into training, get back in the gym. Um, are you cleared to compete in the next couple months? Uh, I'm hoping so. Um, as of right now, no. Uh, my, my training is uh, very limited right now. I'd say I'm about 50, 60%. Um, but we're hoping to be 100% by like, February, March. And I have like six to eight weeks to go 100% for my next fight. Is there any of the guys in the UFC that you'd like to fight in your debut? Or any of the guys from Strike Force coming over? Uh, we haven't really thought of anyone yet. Our main goal is just to get healthy, and then uh, I know uh, we're going to start talking about some names, and you know, hopefully I can get a fight that you know, can get me back into the game and kind of tune up fight. And then uh, from there on, I know there's a lot of tough guys in the UFC right now, both that and guys coming over from Strike Force. So every fight I have now is going to be tough. It's going to be a huge fight, and uh, I really got to step up my competition. A lot of people are talking about the guys that are making the transfer from Strike Force to the UFC, and your name's come up as one of the top prospects, especially because you're undefeated and your age. How does that make you feel, and does it give you added pressure going into your debut? Uh, 
Um, I kind of always had that pressure, you know, saying that everyone has, I have a lot of potential. Ever since I first started when I was a high school student, you know, everyone, the, my coach, Marco Hua, said, oh, you have potential to be a champ, you have potential to do this, that. And it, it's been good. It's given me confidence, you know, but definitely there's pressure. But to me, I mean, there's always pressure to win. I'm undefeated right now, and I, I don't want to get that loss. Um, that's why I always train hard and always go and focus to get that win again and keep winning. Um, but definitely there's going to be some added pressure just because UFC, you know, a big card, um, you know, Dana White, all the guys are watching, and it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of pressure, but, it, but I thrive off that, you know. As a competitor, that adds to the, adds to the uh, you know, to everything. And then with your uh, WBC uh, heavyweight kickboxing or Mike Tsai uh, championship underneath your belt, do you think that gives you a little bit more of, a, of an added bonus uh, in regards to having more than maybe 20 combat, uh, athletic combat fights? Uh, on a big show? Uh, yeah, definitely. And I, I think my stand-up is a little farther ahead than some of the other fighters, you know. I'm definitely working on my ground and my wrestling a lot to, to get that up to par or, you know, up to the same level as my stand-up. But uh, that was a while back. <laughs> and since then, I've been fighting just MMA. But definitely, I mean, uh, that was a great opportunity for me. I, I'm very happy about that. And I hope someday when my MMA schedule allows it, I can get another Muay Thai fight in or maybe K1 someday. Does your current uh, contract with the UFC permit you to be able to defend that title? Uh, I'm not sure. As of right now, I had to vacate it because I, I told him I, I didn't have a chance to defend it at all. I had to focus on my MMA. Um, but I know my strike force, my strike force uh, contract did allow me to fight outside. I'm not sure about the Zufa one, though. And then uh, how does it feel to be representing Team Oyama on one of the biggest stages in the sport? Uh, that's great. You know, everything we do is pretty much in-house here. Um, Colin, Jiva Santana, and... Uh, and Romeo Danza are our coaches here. And uh, I'm just excited to, to get to the UFC Ian McCall and I this year and, and really, uh, uh, you know, give the credit deserved to Colin Oyama for being one of the greatest uh, coaches around. You know, he's brought a lot of guys up to the championship, like Tito Ortiz, you know, Rampage, a lot of great guys. And I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. So this year is uh, really our year to start shining for us, but also for our coach and for our gym. And then talking about Jiva Santana, he said that you've been doing really well in progression for your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it's obviously evident in the cage, uh, three submission victories. Uh, give us your thoughts on, on the, the ground game and what it means to you to, to increase it. Yeah, before, you know, when I, when I was kind of starting out, I was the first guy that when it was time to do Jiu-Jitsu or wrestling, I was the first guy to like, sneak out the back door. You know, I can do pads and spar all day long, but as soon as it came to the ground, it was over, you know. But uh, I started seeing, you know, how, how important it is. And, and if you see in my, in, my, uh, in my fight where I got, almost got dropped by Brandon Cash, you know, uh, I only survived that fight because I had those ground instincts and those ground techniques to get me through to control them and work for a submission, you know. So I see the importance of that. And G was a great instructor. I mean, I've learned so much from him in, in the small time of like a year to two years, you know. So we've been focusing a lot. Even with my injury, I know I've just been sitting in just watching class and just watching technique. And uh, I'm excited, you know. I, I definitely now I, I changed my perspective on things. Before, I always think you got to knock people out. But uh, now I'm looking for submissions, and I catch myself thinking about like, thinking like ground stuff, and I never would have thought that before, you know. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. World of MMA, Tyler Lawrence. Definitely looking forward to your debut in the UFC. Thank, Thank you for your you. time. Thank you very much.